INFJs are often called the misunderstood personality type, which has some validity. We have no trouble empathizing with others, but we have difficulty finding someone as committed to interacting as we are. Finding someone who truly understands? An INFJ, the most difficult of the 16 Myers-Briggs personality types to identify, has a difficult time. You've probably heard that if you're an INFJ, your personality can be intimidating, if not terrifying. This is primarily due to the fact that INFJs are distinct individuals with distinct personality traits. If you believe you are an INFJ, investigate further. Learn which characteristics of your personality type are intimidating to others and how you can use them to improve your soft skills and achieve personal growth. Most people avoid talking to an INFJ because they are perceived as intimidating. Even their own family and friends are frequently intimidated by INFJ. And it's understandable given their strong personality traits. Before we get started, keep in mind that we make these videos for free for your entertainment. And all we ask in return is that you like and subscribe with the notification bell turned on. INFJs are very authentic with their emotions. INFJs are passionate and obsessive about their interests. They're apathetic toward the things they don't have. In most cases, there is no middle ground. This means that they are generally more reserved when it comes to expressing their enthusiasm. It's followed by their usual stone-faced expressions. It's not intended to be ominous or blank. It's just their natural demeanor. INFJs prefer to express their own emotions rather than those expected of them. As a result, when people anticipate a reaction and do not receive it, it is frequently interpreted as an insult. For example, if someone shares some exciting personal news with them, the INFJ's reaction will almost certainly be remarkable. Unfortunately for most people, this isn't enough. They want the INFJ to be just as excited as they are. The INFJ is likely to be happy for the person, but there's simply too much unconcern to be overflowing with energetic emotions over someone's new sneakers or whatever it is. INFJs have a very intense stare. You may be wondering what the INFJ glare means. The INFJ's stare is a soul-piercing expression that many INFJs have as their thinking language. An INFJ may be found staring into the distance at a wall or ceiling or attentively staring at you during a conversation. When confronted with an INFJ personality, look, it'll appear as if the INFJ is reading your mind. It's unsettling. INFJs, in particular, do not break eye contact when staring at you like that. They're not trying to scare you, of course. Because you've piqued their interest in you or something you've said, they may not notice the social cues that ask them to break eye contact every five seconds. INFJs are masters at intuiting someone's character and intentions by reading their body language and nuanced facial expressions and absorbing their aura so they could be trying to read you. Alternatively, they could be deep in thought about the topic of your talk, or they could be daydreaming about something else, and you happen to be in their line of sight. In the latter example, you'll get the impression that the INFJ is staring right through you, lost in their thoughts, diffuse focus emanating from their eyes, as they stare into the infinite space in which you happen to be standing. Many people are terrified of this intense, unbreakable stare that appears to read your soul's fundamental essence as well as your entire previous existence. And it's no surprise that INFJs despise unnecessary conflict. As a result, they are unlikely to be aggressive. They are simply captivated by fascinating ideas. Do you also have an intense stare? Tell us about it in the comments.
INFJs' idealism and perfectionism causes them to take an all-or-nothing approach to everything. They must make every effort to achieve their envisioned bright future or perish. This is due to the fact that future advocates will address their most fundamental needs for creative expression, liberty, and high-quality connections. For the INFJ, manifesting one's ambitions is a much different experience than simply having a luxury or privilege. It is a moral obligation. Of course, an all-or-nothing approach isn't required to achieve most goals, but the INFJ's devotion to everything they value may intimidate or even scare others. INFJ often has confusing intentions. People are frequently unable to understand INFJ's intentions, which is part of what makes them so intimidating. Even if you've known them for years, you can't really tell what they're thinking, which makes things even more difficult because you don't know whether their intentions are good or bad. It is for this reason that people believe they are better off without an INFJ in their lives. They simply do not want to take the risk of being with someone who could be a flight risk. We feel safer when we know what the other person is thinking or what his intentions are. In the case of INFJs, however, you can't tell much. People prefer to keep their distance once and for all because they are extremely intimidated. Ever get confused over what you want or are you always aware of your intentions? They have a complex personality. INFJs do not have a single personality type. They can be introverted readers one day and social butterflies the next. So it all depends on how they feel and what they want to be. They can master any type of personality, and their own personalities are somehow hidden in this situation, making them appear very complex and difficult to understand. People find it easier to avoid INFJs than to recognize that the main issue they face is when they are in a relationship. Their partner finds their actions intimidating. They can come across as a little too forceful at times. At times, they may appear cold and impolite. It will lead people to believe that INFJs are not particularly nice people. As a result, they are filled with dread. But they're just regular people with the right intentions. They are lie detectors. INFJs excel at analysis. They could also be called lie detectors because lying is impossible when dealing with an INFJ. They use their observational skills and immediately notice that something is wrong. People assume that INFJs are really strange people who detect lies for some mysterious reason when they can't lie to their face. INFJs regard their ability to predict people's intentions as a superpower. They may not say much, but rest assured that they will be analyzing your behavioral patterns at all times, and you will not be able to get away with doing them wrong. Their survival instinct is their superpower. Because INFJs are overly concerned, they must separate the good from the bad. When they try to put things in perspective and tell someone that they already know their evil intentions, people often feel violated and intimidated. How often can you detect when someone is lying to you? Share your experiences in the comments. They have different perspectives on the world. INFJs are a rare breed of personality, and their perspective on the world is unique. They do not simplify things in the same way that we do, and they embrace complex ideas better than anyone else. It's more difficult for them to see the world as ordinary people do because they're used to deep thought, but it also makes them stand out from the crowd. People are often intimidated by them because their way of thinking differs from that of others. INFJs dislike small talk as well, and they are always wanting to talk about origin theories or spiritual and mystical things, which makes people afraid to talk to them. Such topics do not sit well with everyone and most people don't know enough about these topics. As a result, they are intimidated by INFJs and avoid engaging in conversation with them. INFJs are considered loners. 
People are naturally afraid of those who prefer to be alone, and for good reason. The majority of evil people are loners. However, this does not imply that INFJs are bad people, as they have their own reasons for being alone. And those are very important reasons. To begin with, INFJs prefer to spend more time alone with themselves, reflecting on their day and all that they accomplished, because it makes them feel productive and motivated. But others do not share this view. INFJs also have a difficult time finding people with whom they can have a deep conversation. As a result, they prefer talking to themselves and thinking deeply. People find their answers to everything intimidating, and they frequently avoid speaking with them. INFJs simply do not want to waste their time on meaningless conversations when they know they could be doing much more with this time. All of these factors combine to make them a loner, and people avoid being around them out of fear. Are you a loner too, or do you like being around your friends and family? INFJs are fierce competitors. Believe it or not, fierce competitiveness lurks beneath the INFJ's enigmatic, soft spoken yet warm and empathetic demeanor. As previously stated, INFJs are devoted and passionate people, and this intensity is visible whenever they compete. They thrive on a genuine challenge. It doesn't matter if it's sports or video games. For the INFJ, it's all in good fun. Most of the time, the competition allows them to explore all of this because they are eager to learn and push their limits. The sheer zeal with which they may attempt to defeat you in any game or sport, on the other hand, can be frightening. INFJs aren't usually bitter losers, but only if they lose, knowing they gave it their all. If INFJs don't give it their all, they usually lose. They are unquestionably better losers. They will, however, be enraged with themselves. INFJs want to win and are determined to achieve any goal, from small victories with close friends to big dreams or life goals. And one of the main reasons they can be intimidating to others is because they are competitive. So INFJs prefer talking to themselves and having meaningful thoughts. Their need for finding the answers to everything makes them very intimidating to people, and they often avoid talking to them. They just don't want to waste their time on meaningless conversations when they know that they could do a lot more during this time. So do you know an INFJ? And are you intimidated by them? Do tell us in the comments section. Also, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel below, and hit the bell icon to get the latest updates. See you in the next video.